everyone and welcome back to the channel where your likes comments and subs are always greatly appreciated i have another video today about the zoom r20 multi-track recorder and i wanted to address some of the questions that have popped up in the comment sections of my other videos regarding using effects on the r20 people have had some errors pop up and i want to address that um, but it really has to do with the two ways that you can apply effects from the r20 to your tracks you can use send effects and you can use insert effects and i wanted to cover both of those today in this video so the two different ways you can apply effects with the zoom r20 are send effects and insert effects there are a bank of effects that are loaded onto the r20 that you can use and apply it to guitars and bass and drums and vocals and and since there's there's a variety of different um preloaded effects that are on there and then you can modulate and adjust those effects but it's how you apply the effects to your recordings that will change how you use them for the send effects the send effect is you have something recorded on here or you're sending or you're, you're bringing in a signal and you will send it to the effect and then from there the effect will be applied to the audio signal and it'll pump out through the headphones or through the monitor out but using a send effect does allow you to record something dry or clean and then but still hear the effect in real time and then you could change the effect after the fact if you have that dry recording or you could do a lot of different things with copy and paste after you've laid down the recording but it'll be recorded onto the r20 dry and clean you'll just hear it through your headphones or through the monitor with the effect being applied you can keep it there um, in the final recording for your mix down if you'd like but you can change it up if you want because it has been recorded dry the other way to apply effect is with an insert effect and the insert effect essentially inserts the effect in between the input for the channel and when it gets recorded to the track on the sd card so the effect is inserted in that pathway when that happens the insert effect is applied to the sound that's coming in from in this case channel one and it is going to be imprinted and recorded onto track one so after you stop recording and you go back to play it that's not a dry clean track that's the track that's been recorded with the effect and i thought i would demonstrate those two differences for you today so in input one i have the high z switch on and i'm going to just use my sort of cheap gibson epiphone guitar that i use as my scratch guitar to just lay down uh, random tracks and kind of jam out with with no game in mind typically um, but it's great for just kind of laying down quick tracks i thought i'd lay down a couple quick tracks and just demonstrate the differences between the send effects and the insert effects okay so let's set up a send effect on track one with the guitar easiest way to do that is to arm your track one so make sure that it is red for recording we'll touch the number one go to track settings and we now have to select a send effect send effects can be found down here in the menu it says send effect we can select that and then you're given your variety of send effects that you can use and edit so i don't know let's do something dramatic so you can hear it a uh, deluxe crunch we'll go back into the menu here uh, and then we have to bring our send level up so we have it select uh, selected for deluxe crunch let's bring the send level up i don't know 60 70 something like that okay now we're all set we have our track that will record dry but we'll send the sound to the send effect so we can hear it through the monitors all right so we're set up on track one could put it into fader view so you could see that and we should be able to hear our crunch distortion sound so if we just hit record we can record something really quick and it'll record dry onto the r20 but it'll be sending that sound to the send effect and that's what's going to be sent through the monitor so i have the monitor set up to record that so that's what you'll actually hear is what's going through the monitors the 
turn off the recording there. So we have laid down a very basic track for ourselves. We can go back to the track view and you can see what I was able to lay down. Now, something really short, I still have the send effect on. So when I hit play, you still hear the effect on track one. But if we now go back into track settings, we can turn the send effect down to zero, or we can go to send effect, deluxe crunch, touch the little icon over here on the side for editing. And now you can see that we have what the, all the, the pedals essentially that are involved in creating that deluxe crunch sound, but we can turn it off right here. So touch that on button. So now we've turned off our send effect and we go back into the menu. So now when we play this, you should hear it as a dry sound. So that's the advantage of recording with a send effect on. It allows you to record your guitar dry and then you just hear the sound applied to it after the, after the fact. So if we go back into track settings, for instance, now I can alter that. Instead of using Deluxe Crunch, I don't know, I could put on Pop Chorus, no idea how this will sound. Make sure we bring the uh, send level up. A, a little bit of a chorus effect. So you can change what the sound effect is after the fact with a dry recording and just changing up the send effects. Now we could take a look at what it's like if you're going to apply an insert effect. Okay, so I just deleted that track that I created and now we will apply an insert effect. An insert effect will allow us to record onto the R20, in this case I'm coming in from channel one onto track one, but it will insert the effect right after the input. So it'll put that effect on before it, it gets to the recording point. So this way, when I record the guitar, it'll be recorded with the effect on it. I'm inserting the effect in between that path from the input to where it records to the SD card. So it'll capture the recording with the effect. In order to apply that, you just need to make sure that you have whatever track that you're recording on. In this case, I'm track one and I do have that armed, it's red. Instead of going into the track settings by hitting the number, which would be up here and we get to track settings, what we wanna do is just while we have track one selected, now let's touch this drawer icon and select an effect from here. Now, what you'll notice is you'll get this error. It'll say effect is in use on send. What you can do, is make sure you go back into the track settings now, pull up that send effect that we had, it was pop chorus, and let's turn that off. Now we'll go back out, we're on track one, let's go to the drawer icon, and it'll still say the effect is on and send, but we know that we, we turned it off. So you can now close this, and we know that we can select an insert effect. Let's go back to that Deluxe Crunch. Let's make sure the Deluxe Crunch is turned on now. All right, so we have our effect on, it's ready to go. The patch level set for 75. And now we should be able to record with our distortion crunch sound. And it could go into the fader view, same thing and now we can record the track. All right, track is laid down. Now we can take a look Add it, and what we'll notice is, is that I've now recorded and laid this down with the effect applied to it, so that's what is recorded onto the SD card.
if I go into the drawer icon, Deluxe Crunch, we turn the Deluxe Crunch off now and back out, and I hit play. You'll notice that the Deluxe Crunch is still on there because it was recorded with the insert effect applied. So with that, you can apply different effects with insert effects or with send effects. Now on top of this, I have the insert effect on the um, this recording. I can do other things with it by applying send effects on top of that now by going into track settings and selecting a send effect. So to say it's on track one in use, but we can now apply a send effect because we're not going to use an insert effect anymore. Uh, maybe we'll go to that chorus, turn that on, and pull the send effect up. So now when I play it, you can see I have the recording with the insert effect from the distortion applied, but on top of that, I've now sent that signal, that audio recording, to the send effect, which is the chorus, and that's what's being played out to the headphones. So with the send effect, you can apply one send effect or one insert effect at a time. After you've laid down your track with the insert effect, you could turn it off, you don't need it anymore, and then apply the send effect. If you use a send effect and you have multiple tracks on, you can only use that single send effect for all of the tracks that are currently playing. So if I've got 16 tracks on and I now have that chorus effect applied, it'll apply it to all of the tracks. Within each track, you can go in and turn on the send levels on and off. So you can lower this all the way down to zero if you want and not apply the send effect on say tracks two and three, but you want to apply it on tracks one and four. You can do that by adjusting the, um, the send levels. So it does give you the flexibility to apply it onto the tracks of your choice and you don't have to apply it to all of the tracks at the same time, but you only get to apply one send effect at any given time. Uh, you can't apply a chorus plus a reverb plus a distortion, at least patch. What you can do is you can alter it and you can have like the three different pedals apply those different things, um, but you're only going to be able to apply one essentially patch effect at a time. So that's all I have for this video. Hope you found it helpful and I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.